Her name is Rachel Lee. She's a woman in her mid-30s who's about to irrevocably change the life of Ralph Raines Jr. This is the twisted story of not just a singular woman, but nearly a whole fam family that participated in the fraud of a forestry tycoon. <sighs> Cassie. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, creepy people. Hello. Hello. I was waiting to see if you were going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Always waving at the blank computer screen in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. As one does. Sorry. Not even bubbles. Not even bubbles. Yeah. (laughs) If you're new to our creepy corner of the world, this is P&W Haunts and Homicides where we chat about true crime, paranormal, and all things witchy in the Pacific Northwest. Ooh, witchy. Yeah. Sometimes creepy. I love creepy, witchy doohickeys. Doohickeys. All right. (laughs) Yeah. Have I got a doohickey for you? Ooh. (laughs) That's what she said. Speaking of witchy, we also do a tarot reading at the end of every episode for a little deeper insight into our topic for the day. So make sure you stick around if you're into that witchy, creepy type of stuff. I feel like today, if you've never listened to the tarot reading before, first of all, um, shame on you, but it's not too late to start making things right. Yeah. Let's just say the vibe will be there. It'll be witchy today. Totally. Bitchin'. Witchin', bitchin', bitchin', witchin'. Witchin' and bitchin'. Do we have any announcements? You know, it's funny you should say that because yes, yes, we do. Oh, it's like I knew Uh beforehand. Yeah. I'm not even sure that this is really so much an announcement as it is just uh, something, just a little bit of a shout out. Oh, yeah. I like shout outs. I do as well. We were featured by blog.feedspot.com us we were ooh yes on their list of 15 best pacific northwest stories podcasts so we're number 2 ah uh, yeah number 2 is first loser no i'm just kidding <laughs> I'm just kidding that's so cool yeah so we're excited um our good friends what happens in the woods are also on the list. What up? What happens? What up? In the woods? (laughs) I didn't finish it. (laughs) We'll put it in the show notes so that uh, you guys realize that this humble brag is not only humble, but uh, it's real. Yeah, it is real. We didn't make this up ourselves. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Feed Spot. Yes. It sounds like a place I want to go eat a buffet. <laughs> the feed spot. <laughs> oh, no. Now I'm just picturing a trough. Me too. Me too. I ha- Well, obviously, because we we're talking about feed, but <laughs> I was picturing a bunch of people at a trough just like. Yeah. Wah. Getting it. Mm. Okay. So I actually heard about this case probably about a week before Cassie also sent it to me. I was getting my nails done, my little tootsie. <laughs> and someone that I met at the salon actually recommended this and actually a couple of other cases. Ooh. Yeah. So when Cassie texted me one night and I happened to be working on my notes. <laughs> That's so fucking weird. <laughs> it's really weird. It's really weird. Yeah. I was like, That's so funny. I may or may not be working on this, but also I totally am. (laughs) Yeah, because I was, I watch American Greed a lot to um, go to sleep because it's just like the guy's voice is like kind of monotone and it's soothing. So I, and I heard like two key words and I was like, (gasps) immediately turn it off because I don't want to know anything about it because I want to hear it from Caitlin. I texted her immediately. Cover this. Did I even tell you like, what it was about or did I say hey it's this thing and this thing have you uh, 
I don't know what it's about, but look into it. Cassie said, and I quote, (laughs) (laughs) this just popped on an ep of American Greed. And I heard Oregon and Tarot, (gasps) and I'm turning it off because I want you to cover it. You might have heard of it, but I don't think I have. And I want to hear it from your (laughs) glorious mouth hole. (laughs) LOL. That was awkward, but I'm not taking it back. I'm funny. And there were a series of emojis. And do you want to know what I said in reply? Yes. Okay. Oh, my God. Wait. Bitch. (laughs) Yes, I'm already covering it. I haven't gotten, like, super into it so far. (laughs) Like, super into it? Super. But I found a court doc literally today and was like, this is definitely getting covered. LOL. No joke. Today. All caps. (gasps) No cap. No cap. (laughs) (laughs) And you said, yeah. That's my reply to a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> you said, what? That's crazy. <laughs> I don't watch the actual TV channels very often. That's so weird. Oh, my God. I can't wait to hear it. And what I ti- said. Can I ask what time this was real quick? Uh, I, am I can't I tell miss- on here. I might be misremembering. 6.05 p.m. is the last time stamp that I can see. Oh, okay. Because yeah. that's, that's what it was then. Because I okay. usually watch it to go to sleep. So I'm not actually watching it. But yeah. I turned it on and I was like, oh, American Greed sounds good right now. So it was like ra- huh. totally random. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, there was a bit more back and forth. But it's important to note that there is evidence forensic evidence that I received this hot tip (laughs) from not just Cassie, but uh, this last text that I'll read. My pedicure friend that I don't think I had time to tell you about last Saturday actually told me about it. I friended her on LinkedIn. (laughs) (laughs) Creep. (laughs) But you did tell me about her. You were really excited. (laughs) I said, like a weird loser weirdo. (laughs) LOL. (laughs) And I don't take that back either. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'm I'm just going to, I'm going in. Go in. Go in hard. All right. I'm doing it. The Rains Family Tree Farm in Gaston is about an hour west from the comparative hustle and bustle of the city of Portland. Mm, I know where that is. Yeah. It's in Oregon. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) One of our keywords. (laughs) I know someone from Gaston. You do. I do. Hi, Tanya. Is her last name Reigns? <gasps> no, it's not. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's where the patriarch of the Reigns family, along with his son, planted over a million trees. That sounds good. Yeah. We like trees. Yeah. At least by Junior's own estimation. So it's kind of a round number. Is it like that thing where you like, you do something for so long, you're like, oh, I planted like a million. Like a million. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a rough estimate. It occupies land purchased in the 1950s by Ralph Jr.'s father, uh, Ralph Sr.'s father, Waldo, oh. was already established in the logging industry in Washington County dating back to 1915. Wow. Where is he? Huh? Oh, my God. I thought you forgot already where this story takes place. And I was like, you. Where's Waldo? For facts sake. Okay. Dad jokes. Oh, boy. Yeah. 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 And boy, did Ralph Sr. have some stories to share from back in the day. If you're a member of the Patreon, don't go digging through our sources on Pastebin. I want you to see Cassie's face when I read her a story from one transcript in particular. Oh, (laughs) Patreon bonus video? Oh, yeah. Nice. Far from your typical tycoon, Ralph Sr. was a decorated World War II pilot 
and graduate of Oregon State University, married shortly after the war was over. The couple would go on to have a single child, a son, in whom Ralph instilled not just the monetary value of the land and the trees on their property, but also that of hard work in maintaining the beauty of the natural environment by creating a sustainable forest operation. Well, that sounds like really, really good. I know. We stan the Ralphs. Yes. yes. Senior and junior. Junior and senior. All of them. All of them. I think. I don't, ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I don't know that we want to be making blanket <laughs> statements like that. That's, that seems ill-advised, given the nature of what we do. <laughs> For most of his life, that same son, Ralph Jr., worked on the family's 1,200-acre tree farm in Gaston. That's a lot of acreage. Tears. He, too, was a veteran of the Vietnam War, and those that know him well would describe him as both intelligent and immensely kind. Aww. I know. I know. <laughs> it seemed that both men, Ralph Jr. and Sr., remained humble and decidedly unencumbered when it came to the material things in life, despite what would eventually become very impressive wealth. Ooh. Yeah. All them trees? All them trees. Though, as a naive and sometimes socially awkward man, they would later reflect that Ralph Jr.'s disposition was, in many ways, very different from that of his hard-nosed father, Ralph Sr. Hard-nosed? I know. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, vocab word of the week. Sadly, Ralph Sr.'s wife and Ralph Jr.'s mother, because that's how that works, mm -hmm. Helen died in 2001. Aw, Helen. Helen. Even though she passed long before the bulk of our story takes place, you know, ya girl did some digging and found her name because nobody fucking used it in anything. Oh, yeah. They're Helen. just like, remember that bitch he married? <gasps> oh, my God. Did they remember really? that broad he married? Oh, Helen. You know, the woman who fed him, clothed him. Both of these men. Women are often undercredited. Is yeah. that what am I trying to say? Under unappreciated, unacknowledged, underappreciated, undercredited. That's yeah. a new thing. Yeah. I legit thought I might have to subscribe to Ancestry, just, you know, there for a minute to find it because it turns out there's a ton of source material tied to what happened to Ralph. And when you're Ralph Jr., it's hard to separate the stuff that's about you versus Ralph Sr. And, mm. But I digress. Still, the two men had each other. And for much of their lives, they continued on as they always had. Ralph Sr. operated the Reigns Tree Farm, handling the financial affairs associated with their family business, while Ralph Jr. primarily felt at home performing the physical labor working on the land. Lumberjacking? Lumberjacking it up. <laughs> yeah. A lot of plaid. I just love me a lumberjack. I can't even get I know. over it. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to slide off this chair. <laughs> Ooh. You're probably wondering where things started to go off course. Yeah, I'm, I've been wondering the whole time. Okay, good, good. That tracks. We're right on schedule. Okay. And I'm here to tell you, while it pains me to do so, that it was his interest, Ralph Jr., his interest in something I think that we all know and love that introduced him to the individual that would lead Ralph Jr. astray. While Ralph Jr. was seemingly about as salt of the earth as they come, he also had an interest in what some might classify as the paranormal or even the occult realm. Ooh. If you're nasty. I love it. Yeah. She's nasty. I am. <laughs> in 2004, at age 57, 
he decided to entertain his curiosity, if only briefly. When he visited a psychic shop while on a trip to Bend in Southern Oregon. Oh, ever heard of it? Uh, a bend or a psychic shop? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay, good. Spoiler alert. This woman, woman, uh? woman, she is not a psychic. Pitch. I know. But she certainly has a solid nose for a con. Hmm. I mean, maybe that is her psychicness. <laughs> <laughs> that's her. That's how her third eye presents. No. no okay. No. With this psychic, he shared one of his deepest desires Aww. to settle down and perhaps have a family of his own, which feels like sort of a part of that sort of a misnomer because Ralph is about as settled down as a person can get. If he settles down anymore, they're going to have to check his pulse. Aww. He's a pretty calm, super nice guy. So, but the family part. Yeah, no significant other or, or little little kiddos. Nope. He wanted that Ten of Cups card, man. Mm -hmm. It's funny you should say that. Oh, is it? Yeah, pops up in American Greed. Did Does you it? know that? No. I'm I watched sure. two seconds of it. I well, I thought maybe I thought maybe you lied. No, <laughs> no, I I'm pretty sure it pops up as like the card oh. that's like in like the foreground when they're talking about how oh, he wanted a family. All dramatic. Listen, they did their research. He wanted a family, and then it yeah. shows. Oh, that's I'm gonna have to watch it after this. You have to. Her name is Rachel Lee. She's a woman in her mid-30s who's about to irrevocably change the life of Ralph Raines Jr. This is the twisted story of not just a singular woman, but nearly a whole fam family that participated in the fraud of a forestry tycoon. Oh. After meeting and quickly befriending Ralph Jr. and also his father, Ralph Sr., who was already in his mid-80s, Rachel Lee gained information about them and their assets. What a normal thing to do. What a stalker. Yeah. Did she also follow them on LinkedIn? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Gradually, she gained their trust. Ralph trusted Rachel Lee implicitly, even sharing his ideal love match. Aww. Then in his late 80s, Ralph Sr. suffered a stroke and was unable to care for himself, much less manage his various financial and business affairs. Oh, I feel like this is where it all goes awry. This is where the dominoes really start to fall. Man. Yeah. From there, it didn't take long for Rachel to become Ralph Sr.'s full-time caregiver. Jesus, she just infiltrated. Holy uh -huh. shit. Cassie, I can see it in your eyes already. You want to know. What are her qualifications Seriously? in caring for the infirm or elderly? I'm so glad that you asked. Seriously. Oh, my God. <laughs> You see, she told Ralph Jr. that she was alone in the world. Her parents had already passed, as had her husband. Though she had, of course, shared the story of seeing him through the difficult times as he had battled cancer. And that would be a sad story. Yeah. If it were true. I was going to say. <laughs> uh-huh. She had been the caregiver for her husband throughout his battle with cancer prior to his death. In addition to her qualifications as a caregiver, she convinced the Reigns men that she could help to manage their financial and business affairs. Oh, shit. If anyone offers to handle your finances, no. Yeah. Just no. Props us not, you know, just... They should have a know. degree. And what's that called? What's the numbers degree? Accounting. Accounting. There you go. You know, ideally, maybe uh, if they're a CPA, that that's yeah. good. Also, I, yeah. there's a variety of needs. Not 
victim blaming. I'm just saying be aware in the future if someone comes to want to handle your finances. You know, usually people who uh, are qualified to uh, handle your finances, like like you mentioned, there's like a degree that they hang on their wall. They might have a website. There might be some references you can check. You usually come to them. They don't right. come to you. Just like no one will slide into your DMs mm-hmm. saying that they'll give you a tarot reading or they have psychic advice for you. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Unless it's us. And then in that case. No, <laughs> we will never come into your DMs. To offer you a psychic yeah. reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. If never you ask never. for a tarot reading from us, yeah. maybe we'll respond. But yeah. <laughs> listen, we don't do that shit for free, though. Got to be on Patreon. Yeah. I mean, you got it. Here's the thing. We are willing to trade you a tarot reading for a story. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Obviously, Ralph Sr. can't be responsible for any of that stuff anymore. In his ill health. You know, he's not running numbers. He's not filing important filings. No, (laughs) I hope not. No. And Ralph Jr. is more of the, you know, living off and working on the land kind of a guy. Yeah. You know? Around the same time, Rachel Lee moved into the Reigns family home in Gaston, Oregon. Damn. Yeah. So that escalated quickly, right? Yeah. Okay. So she's already got her claws in pretty deep. Yep. Yeah. Regarding his various financial and business interests, the Gerard, Siebert, Pollard, and Company LLC represented the estate of Ralph Raines Sr. in both tax and accounting affairs before and after the stroke that he had suffered. Which is interesting because. So they already had financial advisors? Yep, sure did. Okay. For for tax and accounting purposes, he had a representation. Okay. Yeah. So... You're having about the reaction that I feel like is appropriate. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Though as his health increasingly deteriorated in the period shortly after his stroke, the firm hired to represent him, communicated increasingly with Rachel, as well as other members of the Lee family. Hmm. Eventually, all manner of instruction regarding the estate was conducted exclusively by them, the Lee family. Did they get power of attorney? Like, how are they doing this? (laughs) A very good question, Cassie. And you know what? I'm going to answer it. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm about to right now or if that comes later. Okay. So just, you know, hold on to your butt and stuff. It's it's heavy. (laughs) (laughs) Only a couple of years later, sometime in roughly 2006, according to court documents, Rachel was prepared to test her newfound power. When she convinced Ralph Jr. to purchase a home in Northwest Portland that would later be known as the Burkindine Home. Ooh. Yeah. Do you want to guess how much the house cost? $1.6 million. Oh, actually, that's, that's a little high. Oh, damn it. Yeah. I was thinking of today money, maybe. I know. 2006, though. Okay. Okay. A so, million? Unfortunately. Okay. Well, <laughs> listen, it's too late. Because we were playing by the Price is Right rules. And you got to get close without going over. 850. For just shy of $1 million. Yeah. Bitch. Rachel would eventually move the ailing Ralph Sr. from his longtime residence in Gaston to this home as his days on this earth continued to dwindle. Oh, because I'm sure he wouldn't have wanted to be in his own home. Yeah. No, I don't think so. He's like, listen, I've been here. I hang out here all the time. Like, I'm kind of over it. I need a new view, you know? Yeah. It's funny you should say that. Um, Yeah, he is going to have a different view. But um, Mm -hmm. all of this was made possible by the durable, 
power of attorney, known as a DPOA, that Ralph Sr. had executed in favor of Ralph Jr. in 1997. So it's been in place for almost a decade at this point. But his son had it? Mm-hmm. Oh. But now they're going to use it. Okay. Since the Lees controlled Ralph Jr., the power of attorney permitted them to control the assets of Ralph Sr. via the DPOA. Nah, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At this time, there was also a sense of urgency when it came to executing certain transactions that might have been viewed as beneficial to the Reigns family in terms of tax planning for Ralph Sr.'s estate. But does Rachel say to herself, slow your roll? You've just manipulated someone into buying a nearly million dollar home for you and your family to live in. Let's call it a day on the financial fraud. (laughs) I don't think those people think like that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And you would be correct. While that alone would still be a pretty wild story, I'm not sure we'd be talking about it today if that were the case. Because, of course, it's going to get so much worse. I feel so bad for them already. I know. Yeah. Yep. A whole million dollars, essentially, that they've been conned out of. That's like all the trees they planted. (laughs) By 2008, the firm was consulted on, quote, valuing the Rains Tree Farm LLC units and the potential transfer of certain of those units from Ralph Sr. to Ralph Jr. in order to utilize Ralph Sr.'s gift tax exclusion. At or around the same time, the firm was also consulted on the transfer of a cash gift from Ralph Sr. to Ralph Jr. Okay. Also, in order to maximize the utilization of the gift tax exclusion. Are you going to tell us what that is? Because I have no idea. So this is something that uh, people who have enough money to be worried about the tax implications of um, their estate, something that they do to basically, hey, I want to give you this. I don't want you to have to pay taxes on it, though. That's so stupid. That's silly. These socialists, you know, I just want to give you money. Is because, that a thing? Cassie, it's so a thing. They made an exclusion for it. It's It's written into our how tax come, code. <laughs> how come when you win a bunch of money, then it's a gift? Why do you have to pay fucking taxes on it? That's because you're a peon and you don't have an estate. According to the episode of American Greed covering the case, at the time, the Reigns family's timber properties alone were valued at $11 million. Damn. We're talking $2,008. Wow. There was plenty of money to be made from the Reigns family and Ralph's estate. For instance, within the files kept by the firm was a record of Ralph Sr.'s home care expenses for 2007. Oh my God, are they outrageous? Included was a calculation or tally sheet referencing the name Rachel, presumably the payee, or the person to whom the amount was owed. It was a staggering sum, a total of $170,000 for home care. Holy shit, I'm in the wrong line of business. Mm -hmm. $170,000 for home care, all told. And that was for 2007. Just one year? One year. Oh my God. But you know what? I know this firsthand, okay? I've had, you know, elder relatives that have lived in assisted living and memory care facilities. It's quite expensive. So you'd think that's, you know what? That's money well spent. That's why they worked hard their whole lives. They were humble and they saved and they did all the right things, right? Right. Theoretically. Now she's picking up what I'm putting down. Ralph Sr. reportedly lived in a bed, 
kept in a hallway in the massive Burgundine home. Even Harry Potter had a closet under the stairs, at least. A hallway? He was in the hallway. Oh. He literally did not have a bedroom. For $170,000 a year. Oh, and the fact that also it's his money that bought the home that they're all living in. Wow. Friends and family struggle to reach either of the Reigns men. In some cases, it's believed that messages were being erased unnoticed. I don't know who would do such a thing. Yeah, who would do that? I have never had my own personal messages erased by someone who lived in my own home. The fuck? Never happened to me. (sighs) That's fucked up. It was, allegedly. According to a neighbor and friend of the Reigns family from back in the Gaston area, Ralph Sr. was often dirty, clearly not having been bathed recently, wearing unwashed clothes, clothes. I'd like to think that if someone is paying nearly 15 grand a month for home care, the basic hygiene might be one of the line items included in the luxurious package. You would think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, ultimately, it seemed that the Lee family and Rachel in particular had different priorities. She sold the Burkindine home to a third party and then stole the proceeds from the sale. Sounds about right at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 2009, Ralph Jr. met Mary Marks, who purported to be an English woman in need of a green card to avoid deportation. Oh, how how did they meet? (laughs) Funny story. I think I'm psychic. (laughs) (laughs) Or you can actually just read the literal (laughs) writing on the wall. Yeah. Oh, my God. Entering the room suddenly is a tall, slender, blonde woman from Great Britain, Mary Marks. Hello. (laughs) Hello, (laughs) Bobby. Who also seems to have a paranormal gift. What more could you want in a woman? She told Ralph Jr. that she lived in California and worked in accounting. (laughs) Okay, another accountant. All Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Lots of number wizards over here. Yeah. She proposes to him quickly, promising that she loves the land his family has cultivated and can help him manage the business. Proposes like to get married? Uh Uh-huh. She proposed? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Never trust a woman who proposed. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) I was like, wow, she's going to have to take that back. I don't believe in gender roles, but this is like, yeah. The part that's suspicious is that it's all a ploy, right? It's, it's, It's meant to be like, oh, this is so flattering because here's this older man And this younger, attractive, foreign woman who fits the bill of everything he wants. That never happens. And she defies gender roles and she proposes to him. And you know what? It's not about the money. She loves the land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She, She hugs trees, okay? She loves them. Loves the fuck out of those trees. That's offensive to me because I I literally hug and love trees. I've seen her do it. Despite her outward appearance, Mary Marks was not a natural blonde. (laughs) But perhaps more shockingly, she was also not quite a woman. Oh! English or otherwise. Okay. This isn't going where you think it is. You see, Mary Marks was actually Rachel's daughter, Portia Lee, who was reportedly underage (gasps) when she first met Ralph Jr., Ooh. That's right. This woman slapped an incredibly cheap-looking blonde wig on her own daughter, who was not yet 18, and goaded her into a sham child bride wedding scenario. 
That's so gross. It's pretty icky. Ugh. Various sources state that she was anywhere between 17 and 20, but I think in more aspects than one, it can take some time for the truth to shake loose from a rotten family tree. In any case, this is a mother who literally put a wig on her daughter and goaded her into a sham child bride wedding scenario with Ralph, who was in his 60s, just Mm. to sum it up. No. No. No, all the way around. No. No. Portia spoke with a fake English accent and wore glasses along with a wig, just like Harry Potter. Harry, wait, Harry Potter wore a wig? What? <laughs> glasses. Yeah, yeah, glasses. yeah. Scandal. A scandal. Here's perhaps the worst part. It's all fucking terrible, but the name needed to seem legit to work how they intended within the confines of this particular grift. Mary Marks is a real name of an actual person. They didn't have to look that hard for an alias to use, though, because Mary Marks is actually Rachel Lee's mother. Okay. (laughs) So gross. Just keep it in the family. Yeah. The Lee's family staged a wedding ceremony for Ralph Jr. and the fictitious Mary Marks, but the couple in truth was never married. So it was a fake wedding. They Wait, they so they like actually met? Mm-hmm. I don't know why this whole time I'm thinking it's like online because how, 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 mm-hmm. how? Mm-hmm. I, it's, there's so much to unpack here. All of it is so bizarre and really gross. Are you going to show us the spirit Halloween wig? (laughs) You got to go to American Greed for that. (laughs) (laughs) I think they were more worried about the the name sounding real than the Uh wig looking real. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Oh, my God. And it's not just a wig. It's like a hat with a wig attached to it. It's so bad. No marriage certificate even exists because though Ralph continued wearing his ring... For a time after being told the truth by authorities, even the marriage, or perhaps especially the marriage, was part of the con. Oh, he just wanted it so bad. Mm -hmm. While the marriage may have been completely fake, court documents revealed that beginning in 2009, Mary Marks began receiving a very real paycheck from the Reigns Tree Farm LLC supposedly for bookkeeping work. Now, there's one more thing that Ralph Jr. had always wanted from life, particularly as he began to grow older, and that was to have a family. He's already halfway there with a beautiful English woman wife. Yeah. But very quickly after their wedding, Ralph is given what he thinks is truly fantastic news. Mary Marks, a.k.a. Portia, is now pregnant. I don't I don't want to know. Nope, you want to know. Okay. But of course, like every other aspect of this story, it's not quite what it seems because this is definitely not Ralph's biological child. They trick him into thinking he has fathered a child through in vitro fertilization. Oh, thank God. <laughs> mhm. Yeah. I was like, "Please no." Yeah. No, the no. This was really Talk about anticipation. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, though it wasn't Ralph's baby, the pregnancy had been real. But the baby was taken by the father shortly after birth, which is probably the best thing that could have ever happened to that kid. Seriously. Wow. Luckily, another one of Rachel's daughters also gave birth around the same time. Oh my God. Which is great, but it's not great news because Rachel is psyched to be a grandma, but because now she has an infant that she can borrow to use as a stand-in. This baby is then introduced as Ralph's son, Giorgio Armani. That's, that's his name? Mm-hmm. Is that his real name or is that the name she made up? 
I think that's his real name. Giorgio Armani. That's already taken. <laughs> there Listen. can only be one. <laughs> we can't dwell here, okay? Because there's 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 so much more. According to additional court documents, copies of the general ledger and profit and loss statement for the Ralph Rains senior household provided to the firm to account for 2009 showed how rampant the financial abuse had become. The P&L statement, so profit and loss, if you're nasty, Mm -hmm. which is my favorite phrase. I can tell. Yeah. (laughs) The P&L statement shows that approximately $1.2 million was deposited into an account to be used for Ralph Sr.'s household expenses in 2010. Damn, I, I need some household expenses like that. Right? Said funds were made available after the Lees liquidated investments in Ralph Sr.'s UBS account, which UBS is a place where a lot of people have like retirement and other investment accounts. Oh, not where you send packages? No. Okay. You B as in Bob S. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of that calendar year, only 200000 of the one point. $2 million originally deposited remained. Uh-huh. I knew I was going to need to give Wait, you what? a second. To, <laughs> you they say- spent a million dollars. How? It's a really good question. Like, did they actually spend it on stuff or did they? Like, oh, they spent it on they stuff. They didn't hide it in like offshore oh, they, accounts. They, they spent it on stuff. Oh, my God. Cassie, we are going to get to the stuff. Oh, my God. Okay. <clears throat> I hope they bought a lot of really cool tarot decks. That's all I'm going to say. I don't think so. Approximately $375,000 was used to pay taxes. Responsible. Oh, that's good. Okay, Mm -hmm. no tax fraud here. Which were only incurred in large part due to the significant capital gains incurred as the result of the Lee's liquidation of investments. Okay. So they took the money out and then it was taxed. So cause and effect. <laughs> so it wasn't the gifted kind of money. Nope. Okay. It was just shy of half of the total that was documented to have specifically supported the lavish lifestyle the Lee family was rapidly becoming accustomed to. Entries in the ledger included payment for things like salon visits luxury cars, and even a personal designer, all of which legal filings indicated were, and I quote, (laughs) completely inconsistent with the expenses of an incapacitated man needing a full-time caregiver. Yeah. Which I can say I wholeheartedly agree is correct. Like, yeah, no, duh, you think? Yeah, he doesn't need an interior designer. I no, <laughs> not really. Or trips to the salon. He really needs a bath. Oh, that, oh it's so sad. <sighs> well, this next part won't make you feel better then. Then in February of 2011, Ralph Sr. died at 91 years old. But Junior's wife isn't present at the funeral. Where is she? Good question. Months later, Ralph Jr. has his wife and his son's names added to his parents' gravestones. No. Oh, no. A key element of the Lee's fraudulent scheme moving forward from this time was to tell Ralph Jr. that he had to sell the Rains tree farm in order to pay taxes. Like many other statements made by the Lee family, survey says that was a lie. That doesn't sound right Mm -mm. at all. No. In addition to lying about there being outstanding taxes from the probate process, Mary Marks fakes a second in vitro pregnancy. Jesus, woman. Mm -hmm. To further motivate Ralph to create more liquid cash 
in roughly 2011, according to American Greed. He believed this second pregnancy would be a daughter and hoped to name her Gloria. But months later, Mary fakes a miscarriage before flying home to England and faking her death. This bitch. This is so fucked. Mm -hmm. Faking things that real people actually go through. Yes. Including in vitro, which isn't fucking easy. No. So fake Giorgio Armani is now a fake orphan. Where does he think the kid went? Um, The kid didn't go anywhere. But like, oh, so the kid is still with him? Giorgio is. Okay. The Lees were able to keep Ralph Jr. from receiving the correct information because they controlled all contact with the firm at this stage. I mean, they already had for quite some time. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So it's not difficult to see how the Lees were able to orchestrate the sale of the Rains tree farm, which was contrary to Ralph Jr.'s plan to continue farming for many years. In a series of sales in 2011 and 2012 for over $12 million and steal the bulk of the proceeds just as had been done with the Birkendine home. Records show that by mid-2011, the firm had been informed by Rachel Lee that she was in the process of attempting to sell the Pumpkin Ridge tract of the Rains tree farm. The Pumpkin Ridge tract was sold on July 27th, 2011 for just over a million dollars. The mills going around. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. The Gales Creek tract was sold on September 23rd, 2011 for just shy of 1.5 million. The Lees thereafter began to drain the accounts of the proceeds of these sales. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. As one does. <sighs> Holy shit. I feel so bad for this guy. And he thinks he just lost his wife. And he's, his baby. Yeah. And he's in mourn, like deep mourning, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Oh. When the firm was provided an inventory of estate assets, the inventory showed that the only remaining worthy, and this is prior to the sale of the Burgundine property, obviously, Number one, the Burgundine property. Number two, Ralph Sr.'s interest in the Rains Tree Farm LLC. Number three, approximately $115,000 from the UBS account. And number four, cash and miscellaneous items worth around $2,000. Along with the estate inventory, the firm was provided a copy of the February 2011 statement for Ralph Sr.'s UBS account, which contained what court documents describe as a graphic depiction of the depletion of the account from a value of over $7 million in 2006 down to $115,000 at the time of Ralph Sr.'s death. (sighs) The firm reportedly did nothing to express concern about the massive depletion in assets or inquire how it was possible for a very wealthy man, such as Ralph Sr., to die without significant additional cash, investment accounts, and other property, and to have dissipated the liquid assets that should have been available to pay estate taxes. Wow. Yeah, I feel like this firm handles a lot of people's finances, right? Like they should know Mm -hmm. what's normal and what's not normal. There's a lot of red (laughs) flags. Yeah. A lot. Instead, the firm simply proceeded to pair the tax. They They just prepared the tax return as if this was business as usual and continued to communicate with Rachel Lee. Like, do they... 
are they allowed to like say anything, you know? Or, oh, absolutely. Uh, They're financial advisors yeah. and tax preparers. I mean, this is that is literally their job. Wow. All of the aforementioned is completely at odds with the fact that the same firm had been consulted for a number of years regarding the Reigns family's intent to maximize the natural resource credit for the estate. And they even revisited this issue in connection with the preparation of the estate tax returns. The firm was fully aware that the sale of the tree farm parcels was at odds with the Reigns family's longtime plan to maximize the natural resource credit. And in fact, the sales had the effect of decreasing the credit to which the estate was entitled. So we're going against longstanding plans. We're talking about plans intended for, uh, for generational wealth generational assets that aren't necessarily strictly speaking cold hard cash but unreal wow further in connection with analyzing issues related to estate taxes the firm was aware of ralph jr's plan to continue tree farming for many years given the recent land sales and those that would be transacted within just months surely this should have been of concern. Yeah. He was only in his 60s, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, and he worked physically his whole life. So I'm sure he's yeah. in shape. Like mm-hmm. he could still do that for probably like right. at I least mean, even 10 if years. he's right? not physically doing it. Yeah. The farm could still be maintained by yeah. others. Because it wasn't just him. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> he's just out there shopping down trees. Now That's they probably right. had a ton of employees. Out there lumberjacking solo. Holy shit. And all those people affected. Oh mm-hmm. my God. In January 2012, the wholesale theft continued as the Lees orchestrated the sale of a portion of the Cherry Grove tract of the tree farm for just over a million dollars and therefore began to drain the accounts of these funds as well. They're just finding all the little places every to take. Yeah. Well, every little crumb, million mm-hmm. dollar crumbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Million dollar crumbs. Just two months later, in March of 2012, the firm received a copy of the general ledger for the Reigns Senior Household for 2011. Despite the fact that Ralph Sr. had died in February, the ledger shows that the excessive spending of his assets continued regardless of his having passed. Of the approximately 16 pages of entries of expenditures for Ralph Sr.'s household, roughly 14 of the pages show expenditures incurred purportedly by his household after his death. How, is this ghost needing shit? Like, mm-hmm. what? How? How do you explain that? Like, as a ghost, I would get my nails did. Yeah, but these were for things that I can guarantee you were not the expenses of a ninety-one-year-old man or his grieving family. In July two thousand twelve, Ralph Jr. turned sixty-five. Also, in July of two thousand twelve. The Lees orchestrated the sale of substantially all of the remaining tree farm for just shy of $9 million and therefore began draining the accounts of the proceeds of that sale as well. The following month, the firm was aware of all of the tree farm sales and as a result prepared additional estate tax returns showing additional taxes owed as a result of the sales. Because they didn't maximize the natural resource credits, so then they owed money. Oh. So when they did the thing that flew in the face of the estate's long-term plan for the farm, and they sold parcels, it didn't work out. Oh. In or around August of 2012 is when Rachel Lee actually orchestrated the sale of the Burgundine home. I know we've talked about this quite a bit at this point. Rachel Lee signed the transaction documents purportedly as the attorney in fact. That's that whole, you know, power of attorney Mm -hmm. thing. 
I wasn't going to leave this in, but it just, it grabbed, it grabbed my attention. (laughs) Great. (laughs) The firm received a copy of an escrow instruction letter and they had to attach a voided check. And that check was for the account where they were supposed to be depositing the monies from that sale. So it's a voided check. It was a Hello Kitty check. No way. Really? (laughs) This bitch ruined everything, even Hello Kitty. Wow. I should have brought my little Hello Kitty keychain. (laughs) Oh, I didn't know. I know. know? I didn't know you had. I I didn't remember. I was just at my my storage the other day and I saw it and I almost grabbed it. Because I was so like, weird. oh, it's my Hello Kitty. But I was like, I don't need that right I now. I don't need it. I did. <laughs> I did need it. Damn it. Wow, that's crazy. Also, I don't want checks, but now I kind of do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that you know that you can have Hello Kitty checks, yeah. she's like, I need a checkbook. <laughs> <sighs> Adulting, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In November of 2012, the firm was informed that the estate was being audited. Good. (laughs) It needs it, obviously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A little too late. So this was well prior to their preparation of the 2012 tax returns for the estate, which showed nearly $700,000 owed in taxes in connection with income from the sales of the Rains tree farm. Despite the fact that the Lees were in the process of stealing the purported proceeds from the sales, because that's kind of their thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In December of 2013, Rachel emailed the firm inquiring about the amount of inheritance taxes still owed. The firm emailed Rachel indicating that the amount still remaining to be paid was approximately $350,000. At which point, this bitch had the audacity to ask, Oh, wow, did you find out if we can give them the rest of the tree farm to pay off? Huh? Let me explain. (laughs) What? In doing so, Rachel Lee was suggesting the possibility of transferring the small remaining parcel of the Rains tree farm on which Ralph Jr.'s modest home was located to pay the taxes. No. It's all he has left and it's where he lives. And she's just like, mm, can you take that? Can you just take that? God. To pay off my fraud? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Here's my Hello Thank Kitty you. check. The firm responded to her email on the same day to say, most likely the IRS will review Junior's personal assets and if there are adequate liquid assets to satisfy the obligation, they will not accept non-liquid assets. So as long as there was any cash remaining that could be collected, that's their preference apparently. They don't want to just take like a tree farm And then have to sell it. Like, Mm -hmm. that makes no fucking sense. I mean, I know, I think when they're, when they're desperate, they like take all their assets. If that's all he had, they would take it. But he still has enough money that they would try to go after that first. They would try to go after other types of assets before that. There's absolutely zero indication that the firm raised questions with Rachel Lee let alone Ralph Jr., as to why they would need to sell the small remaining portion of the tree farm. Remember, this is where his whole ass tiny house is located currently in order to pay $350,000 in inheritance taxes. When he had just sold nearly the entire family tree farm for over twelve. dollars million dollars in cash yeah does she not just like have that change in her car like what (laughs) nor did they question what happened to the ubs account that had contained as much as seven million in liquid assets portland police detective liz crothers 
Ooh. <laughs> Crothers. <laughs> Crothers. Listen, between her and another guy and the IRS, they're like, no, this shall not stand. Good. She noticed the expensive vehicles frequently parked at the Canby Psychic property. <laughs> oh, shit. From which Rachel continued to run her, quote, legitimate business. Mm. But quickly, it becomes clear that something is up. Because that's a few too many fancy cars. Mm. Mm -hmm. Marlene Olson, investigator with the Oregon Department of Justice, that had also conveniently worked in logging and also knows the Reigns family personally. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She steps in. Okay. So Marlene Olson and Liz Crothers attended the same seminar in January 2014 on elder fraud, along with Steve Floyd, who is a detective with Canby PD. Wow. Thank God for that. Wait, what was it? The uh, seminar. The seminar, yeah. Oh my gosh. When Marlene went to visit the Rains family tree farm and saw the clear cutting for herself, she knew something was seriously wrong. Steve Floyd subpoenaed financial records while the IRS Criminal Investigation Division also began to take a look at the books. Shortly after, the Canby detectives visit Ralph Jr.'s home in March of 2014. And then the Canby psychic property is also searched. Seizures of Rachel Lee's assets begin. They discover Rolexes, a blank signed check, and the fucking blonde hat wig. You know, with all this money, <laughs> the fucking blonde hat wig used to dupe this poor oh man. Oh my God. If they couldn't splurge a little on something a little nicer. Nope. And they still had it too. That's, oh God. Probably for the next old, older right? person they're going to fraud. Elder Who knows fraud. what they were cooking up? Jesus. In April of 2014, the IRS provided the firm its recommendations resulting from the audit, confirmed that certain penalties would be assessed, and indicated that approximately $250,000 was still owed to the IRS. By the time he's confronted with the latest evidence in May, Ralph's, he's mad. He's mad. Good. And defending Rachel. Oh, shit. <laughs> mad at the wrong people. Mm -hmm. No, Ralphie. I know. Ralphie June. He's not ready to come out the other side yet. Well, I mean, and if you admit that all of that happened to you, that's like, oh my God, such a mental fuck. Because mm -hmm. you're like a, a strong man. Mm -hmm. <sighs> he doesn't realize yet. Rachel Lee directed him to write letters defending her actions. And he did. He wrote several. An American Greed shared the text included in the one that they finally decided was good enough to send. A short while later, Ralph is back in Bend with Portia and Rachel, the place where he first met Rachel. At the time of this trip toward the desert, though he was completely unaware, Ralph was down to just $200,000 left to his name. Thankfully, the authorities were all too aware of the devious financial deeds of the Lee family and moved to arrest the two women. They were arrested at the shop in Bend, likely in just the nick of time, as authorities believe that the purpose of this trip was finally getting rid of Ralph Jr. for good. No. They were going to kill him? Allegedly? Allegedly, and leave him in the desert, allegedly. What the fuck? Wow. I mean, I'm like, I'm not 
I'm not surprised, but still just like hearing you say it. It's awful. He wrote letters defending you. He did. Like... The criminal indictment against the Lees was filed approximately one month after the report was put forth by the IRS on May 8, 2014. It's then that the Lees were arrested in Bend, Oregon. According to court documents at the time of their arrest, the Lees had been keeping Ralph Jr. in a converted garage behind their Bend psychic shop. Keeping him there? That, my voice got really high pitch. That was, that's the appropriate response. Ralph Jr. was weak and confused when the authorities located him on the property. As a result of his inability to manage his own affairs, in June of 2014, the Washington County Court entered a stipulated limited judgment appointing conservator for an adult for an indefinite period of time, which that judgment appointed a conservator for Ralph Jr. They Britneyed him, but... Oh my God. But I'm, he really needed it. Yeah. This is, this is the opposite of what happened to Britney. This is someone who very deeply needed this assistance. Yeah, by someone not not them. Mm -hmm. There are certain aspects of this case that like this could have just been like four whole ass episodes. Um, there's a name I'm about to drop that you're going to go, huh? This is Rachel Lee's boyfriend, husband, sometimes depending on who she was talking to, brother, wasn't her brother. Blancy. 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 That's the, the first name? Mm -hmm. Just one name? Mm -hmm. Just yep. like Cher and Madonna? Blancy. Mm -hmm. Blancy. Yeah, Blancy had also worked for the Reigns family. There's a number of instances um, where he comes up and the various ways that he helped to perpetrate this fraud. Like, he did some bad stuff for sure. We are not in disagreement about that. I just didn't think he was that interesting of a character overall. My brother, husband, Blancy? I That's know. That's interesting to me. I know. I know. Is he a real person? Yes. Okay. To think that he was the least interesting character <laughs> as the brother, husband. <laughs> wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Blancy pled guilty and helped the feds track the siphoned funds. Mm, so he was a So we snitch. do still have to talk about him. Yeah. Yeah. Snitch Blancy. Snitch Blancy. For the charges of money laundering as well as other tax-related charges, he receives a sentence of... Cassie, do you want to guess? Do you want to guess? You want to guess how long he got? I'm not good at this. I don't know. 10 years. Um, it was probably like 10 months. Oh, sweet baby girl. I know. I'm it's literally not good horrific. at horrific. No, I know. I'm never good at this either. But this is, it's, it's somewhere between those two numbers. I'm like, he either got way too little or way too much oh, yeah. and took the fall, you know? He receives a sentence of two years. Oh, I was totally going to say two. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Rachel pleads guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud, money laundering, and failure to pay income taxes. And she gets eight years and four months, which seems like kind of a lot of time, seeing as she didn't actually kill anyone. But I can't help but... There's like a little bit of a sticking point for me because it's also noticeably less time than the duration of her financial long con. Yeah. And she ruined two people's lives, like completely ruined she them. She ruined a lot of yeah, lives. Probably more, but like. Yeah. Ugh. But two people distinctly stick out. Like yeah. they're. 
Does she not get like elder abuse charges? Because was there any proof? (sighs) I mean, technically, I don't think there was any evidence of physical elder abuse. It's all elder abuse in like neglect. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and strictly in like a financial aspect, really. Yeah. Portia pleads guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud. She would receive two years and nine months in prison. She should get another year for a bad wig. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. That's a crime. She, that, it was a crime. <laughs> that is true crime. <laughs> now, Cassie, if I told you that even though there's still some sad stuff left, that this story kind of has a silver lining, would you believe me? I hope that you would never lie to me. Okay. I'm putting a lot of faith and trust in you. Ralph has struggled to come to grips with the fact that the woman he knew as Mary Marks was really Portia. <laughs> he thought she died. That's so I... fucked. And she, in fact, only saw him as a Mark. Get it? Mary Marks. <laughs> no? I get it. I get it. My heart hurts. On the day of her sentencing, she agreed to meet with Ralph and greeted him in the Mary Marks getup, complete with the British accent, before taking off her disguise. She did not. The prosecution actually arranged this. They did this for his benefit. Did they tell him that she was alive actually first? Or did he just see a ghost? He did. It's. I mean, he knew that Mary Marks was having a trial, right? Because he's there. Okay. There's a lot of cognitive dissonance and very hurt feelings involved in this. But this helped him to come to terms with the overwhelming deception according to some of the people that have remained closest to him throughout his emotional ordeal. He literally, until she took off the wig, he just could not fathom that Mary Marks wasn't real and that anything that he was being told was true. It's just so fucking sad. Oh my God. Ralph doesn't typically speak about this period of his life, Some of his money and other assets have been returned to him after being recovered by authorities through seizures. Ralph currently lives in a relatively modest A-frame style home on the remaining family property, where the evidence of the clear-cutting is in plain view. A stark reminder of his painful past. To some, it might be surprising to hear how optimistic Ralph has remained in light of all that he has endured, but when he appeared on American Greed, his parting words to the crew at the end of the episode were, Ten years ago, this whole area in here had trees. This size up here, as he gestured to a large stand of old growth trees. It's something I helped plant, I helped build, and now it's gone. I realize we've had A disaster here, but it will grow back and heal. Oh, it will. Ten years from now, you won't recognize this spot. Come back in ten years. Oh, I know I was like crying at the end of the episode. Can you imagine? No, like this whole thing is just crazy they just like brainwashed him I feel like and I just feel like if it had just been about the financial fraud I know it's easy to say that you don't care about the money when you have the money I don't know that I assume yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) but it's the wholesale fraud that they perpetrated in like the deepest and most hurtful and personal ways in his life that yeah, it's just it's fucking heart wrenching it really is it's so sick 
Ugh, like yeah, like as much as we made fun of this bitch's fake wig and all this stuff, but I can really see how you you know the soft spots and the nerves that you can mm-hmm. poke and manipulate in yeah. to someone who then can't see any of that anymore. Ugh. And this is super heartbreaking as well, but he obviously hasn't been able to maintain a relationship with Giorgio. Oh, God. And he said that's the one thing that he wishes is that he's like, I know maybe it's not right. You know, maybe, maybe that it shouldn't be that way. He's back with his family, like his real mom now. But he really desperately wishes that he could have a relationship with Giorgio because he thought he was his father. He loved him. He, you know, was helping to raise him for all intents and purposes. Yeah. How old was Giorgio in the song? Oh, gosh. Um, by the end of it, um, he might have been close to like kindergarten age. Because that, That's going to fuck with him, too. He's like, mm-hmm. where was this father figure I had for so long? Mm-hmm. Just like the the damage. The tendrils of damage. I was literally just going to say the tentacles. It just, there's so much trauma. That's why I say it. It's like, there's not any murder technically, but it feels so much worse in a way. Yeah. And obviously murder is bad. Murder, murder is, is bad. bad. We are not saying murder. <laughs> We are saying that like this just feels like on another level. It's, it's torture. Sick. It's yeah, t- like it torture. It's yeah. like psychological warfare and yeah. torture. Yeah. And it would be awful to do it to anyone. But the fact that they didn't pick somebody who was a young man and could, you know, move on in his life and do things differently moving forward. This is someone who's already like retirement age. Yeah. Like he's entering what should be the golden years of his life. And they have just, they've absolutely annihilated what he thought was his life. That's crazy. I fucking hate it. I hope he has the same outlook on his life that he does with the land. I think very much so. You are in your elder years, but that's not to say that you can't have a fulfilling life. Yeah, I think he can still find meaning in, you know, what he does on this earth. And obviously a lot of what his family has done has been, you know, trying to be of service to their local community and just generally being good humans. I don't know. I mean, what else do you do? You can't you can't do anything but just. Yeah. Have hope and live with that that little spot of sunshine. And you know what? You know what you do? You do some tarot. But you know what you don't do? You don't fake the tarot reading. You don't just like make shit up. You don't manipulate people. Yeah. You don't fake multiple pregnancies. That's that is so and your gross. Death. That is so gross. All of that is just gross. Should we do some tarot? Yeah, let's do some real ass tarot. Okay. That isn't going to hurt anybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Except our own feelings, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. sometimes, but yeah. What are you going to do? It's always the truth. Yeah. And that's better than lies. And that's a quote from me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That yeah, was the most basic amazing. quote You're ever. Like, <laughs> better than lies. And I'm a like, genius. <laughs> Put that on my tombstone. Oh, my God. As indie podcasters, we love to show our support of other awesome shows. So stay tuned for the promo we've got to share with you this week. Let's show them some love. You can find their info in our show notes. Hey, it's Katie. And Izzy. We are the hosts of Horror Cats and Witch Hats. A podcast where we take a deep dive into the movies created to haunt horrify and bewitch every other week we cover a movie recommended by our listeners my favorite episodes have included talking about the true crime that inspired the film haunted history and of course any cat that survives till the end 
So follow us on Facebook and Instagram at horror underscore cats underscore witch hats and make sure to send us your movie recommendations. But more importantly, send us your cat pictures and videos. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Podcasts. Or pretty much wherever you listen to fine podcasts. You guys, we're, we're back. back. And don't worry, we did get more wine. Well, of course. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Look at all the minis. Oh no. Yeah, this will definitely be one we have to get some good pictures. Oh yeah. You cannot see. I'll point, I'll point some stuff out while she's shuffling. I like it. Tiny tarot cards. Ah! They're teeny weeny. <laughs> They're Caitlin sized. Uh, we found a Caitlin sized deck. She shuffled these perfectly earlier. Yeah. Didn't drop a one. <laughs> I dropped literally every single one. Of them. She grabbed them all and they all just fell out of her hands. And I was like, is this the first time you've ever felt like a giant? Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay. Oh, what did we get? King um, of Swords. Was King it upright? It was, yes. King of Swords. It's He's not a flamingo. King. It's not a flamingo, but it looks like one. I think it's a heron. I'm just like, it's not a flamingo. <laughs> She's like, that's all the birds I know. Those are from the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. King of Swords. Our keywords are judgment, intelligence, mental power, and communication. In some decks, the King of Swords sits on a throne wearing royal robes and a crown, brandishing a mighty battle sword. (gasps) They were both veterans. Oh, yeah. Other decks show him in military armor. Mm, mm -hmm. In a reading, he may represent an actual person, in which case he's usually a mature man known for his intelligence, communication skills, Fairness and objectivity. Wow, that, that, yeah. That's creepy. <laughs> That's like one of the things I wanted to like kind of, I don't like drill in, but not really, that he wasn't like a dumb person. No, not at all. Yeah. The upright king represents intellectual pursuits, communication, spiritual knowledge, which was like Ralph's other passion oh. aside from having a family. And study. You may be mastering a mental task or using your communication skills successfully. This is going to make you absolutely short your pantaloons. I thought you were reading still and I was like, wait. (laughs) Yeah, that's in the book. Sometimes this card indicates a decision, judgment, or legal matter. Yes. I think you could say. If the king signifies an actual person, he may seem stern, analytical, or aloof. Perhaps he's a lawyer or judge, a professor, military leader, scientist, or religious leader. This is so Ralph Sr. In a reading about money, the king upright recommends taking charge of a financial matter. Oh my God, it hurts. (laughs) Do your homework. Don't let your emotions influence a decision involving money or investments. We needed to do his tarot reading. It hurts. This card may also mean profiting from an intellectual endeavor. If the reading is about your job, it may indicate you work in a field that requires keen intelligence, good communication, or analytical ability. The king advises you to show leadership regarding decisions or judgments. Clarity and objectivity are important. Because he, you think of him as we talked about, he he worked like very physically. He did. Yeah. But then also to run it after his dad passed, he he like ran the whole thing, right? Well, uh, I mean... Not from, like, the standpoint of, like, the administrative or bookkeep. Obviously, we know Rachel was doing that. But, I mean, yeah. Cassie. Yeah. You're going to shart your pants a second time. Double shart. Double shart. In a reading about love, the king symbolizes a relationship based on shared interests and ideas rather than passion. Mm. Yep. Like a sexless marriage where... 
They might have been fake shared ideas. Yeah. You and your partner resist expressing deep emotions, preferring a friendly partnership, which is literally the name of the game here. Yeah. Perhaps you fear losing independence if you open your heart. I don't think he was the one that was afraid. There's an extra excerpt. I think the highest purpose of ritual or magic work is to seek our gods, to commune with the cosmic mirror and the spirits of nature in order to learn more of the divinity within ourselves and reach ever more toward personal growth in its highest expression. Nature. That's what like real, what does it say? (laughs) What's the beginning again? Sorry. The highest purpose yeah. is to seek our gods, commune with the cosmic mirror. This is just, it's Ralph Jr. all over the place. And it's like what a tarot reader should be doing. Not, yeah. not selfishly doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. <laughs> In the nature. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All those trees. Trees have feelings. Oh, I kind of want to read this. Okay. I don't know why. Let's see. She wants to know what the bird is, people. Oh, the bird's a great blue heron. The (laughs) king always felt most himself in the water. True, his subjects gasped in awe when he took to the air. His wide wings outstretched in the gleaming sunlight. And he did enjoy the bird's eye view, so to speak. But it would surprise them to learn that it was here in the water where he felt most at home. I feel like the water is like the trees. No. It is. It like is. Like a sea of some, trees. There's literally a quote that I I I swear it was in my notes, but it doesn't seem like it made the final cut. I don't know how, but he was described as being more at home with trees than people. Yeah. And like this whole time I've been like saying in my mind, like a sea of trees, a sea oh of God. trees. And this is like water. Okay. There's more. <sighs> He stood perfectly still until the fish forgot him, seeing him as just a part of the landscape. He enjoyed watching them flit about his tall ankles <laughs> like tiny thoughts darting in and out. Yeah, that says thoughts. Like tiny thoughts darting in and out of a rapidly processing mind, which <laughs> I was talking about that earlier. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> when he saw one of particular interest, he might observe it for a while. Ooh, now this is kind of like reminding me of her. Oh. Like blending in and yeah. like observing and then. Oh, I hate that. The light on its scales, the exact motion of its fin and tail, its patterns and coloration. So it's like studying and like yeah. thinks this one fish is interesting. And if it suited him, he would take it breaking the stillness with an instantaneous strike downward, spearing it on a bill as sharp as any honed edge. He never misses. Wow. Okay, so at first I was thinking this was him, like it was describing him, but now it's like totally her. I mean, there's parts of it that resonate for Ralph Jr., but there's definitely parts of it that are very pointed, and it's Rachel and other members of the Lee family. Wow. That's crazy. That's a little taste of your cold reading that's going to happen. <laughs> Not great. Should we do this thing? Sure. Should we? Ch- I feel like I want to cheers. All right. Cheers, darling. To Ralph Jr. I'll drink to that. You're going to have amazing life. You're going to have amazing life. Why use many words? <laughs> I keep doing that. Ralph, you're going to have an amazing life with that outlook. Like, that's how you get a good life is like having this great outlook on it, even though shitty things happen. It's what you make you, it. You just like have to. Yeah. That or you're just fucking depressed. And that's never fun. <laughs> no, not at all. Ugh. All right. have, have a, a creepy, creepy ass, ass day. day. See you, see you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. You can't or, see me. I room. mean, just whenever we show up again, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. And always every Tuesday, but maybe other times too. There will never be a scam here. Never ever. That's why we do it on camera. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The 
anticipation. The anticipation. That's when you have to <laughs> pee really bad. <laughs> oh, God. What do you call it when something is so funny that you're worried you might pee? Hmm. Hilarity? Hilarity? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll workshop, <laughs> workshop that one. Okay. Okay. Not that quick on my brain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Well, don't think with my toes. <laughs> Hello, puppet. <laughs>